Welcome to the OCI Grails QuickCast, bite-sized portions of Grails productivity tips to help maximize developer productivity with the framework. Grails QuickCasts are brought to you by OCI, the home of the core Grails development team and your source for professional support, project work, and training around the Grails framework. Grails QuickCasts are distributed in partnership with DZone, who help build knowledge and relationships to maximize your success. All right, what we're looking at here is a brand new Grails 3.1.1 application that I've added, uh, added a little bit of code to. So we'll take a quick look at the code that I've added to this project. And this project was created with the standard default web profile. Uh, we'll come back to that detail uh, later on. But this is, a, this is a, a pretty standard, plain vanilla Grails 3.1.1 application. And I've added a couple of domain classes to the application. So this is one of those domain classes. Uh, we see that the domain class is called artist and artist has a name and it has many albums associated with it and the artist class has been annotated with grails.rest.resource to express that i want to publish a rest api under slash artists for managing instances of the artist class and the formats that i want that api to support are json and xml so that's all very standard grails stuff there and if i look at the album class we'll see that the album class is very simple it, it just has a title associated with it and the only other piece of code that i've added to the application is in bootstrap i've uh, added some code to create instances of the artist class and add albums to those instances and persist those to the database so we've got uh, some data to work with so with just that in place if i were to send a request to slash artists we should see a response that looks uh, something like this. So what we're seeing here is the result of the default JSON converter that's, uh, that's provided by the framework. So we see in, in the JSON, we've got a list of artists. And uh, so this is the first artist whose name is Riverside. That uh, artist has a list of albums associated with it. And the way that the default converter um, behaves is, is what we see here, and that is the whole, uh, not all of the details in the whole object graph are represented in the JSON. Um, when the, since the artist has many albums associated with it, what the default converter will do is render a list uh, of IDs for those albums. So we don't see details about the albums, we only see the IDs here. So I wanna take, uh, make some changes to our application uh, that represent a really simple, really powerful way to customize the format of this uh, of this JSON. So let's take a look at that. All right, let's send another request to our application. And uh, you see that the JSON is structured uh, differently than we, we saw a moment ago. Um, so before, what we were seeing in this list right here was just a list of IDs. And now what we're seeing is uh, a, sort of an, an expansion of, uh, of details that describe each of those albums. So in our case, the album is very simple. An album just has a title associated with it, but I could just include any details that I like about an album here. So for each artist, and let's render just one artist here to make it a little bit easier to look at. For each artist, uh, we see the artist name and we see details about the albums associated with that artist. And those details are represented as a list of, uh, of JSON maps and each of those nested maps there have a title associated with it. So let's take a look at the application and see what it took to, to make that happen. So first of all, I had to add this to my build.gradle file. So that's not there by default when you create a Grails 3 application using the default web app profile, which is the default profile. So if you don't specify what profile you want your application to use, you're using the web profile and the web profile does not include this dependency. So the dependency expressed here is a dependency on the views-json library. And that library adds some really interesting capabilities uh, to our application. So let's explore that. Under Grails app slash views slash artist, I've created these four JSON files. So let's take a look at them. The index.json file is the, uh, the, the file that will be rendered when I want to represent a list of artists. So if we come back over here and get rid of the ID there, this list of artists here, um, th this was the result of rendering index.json, right? So 
Typically, a JSON file will have a model uh, block that describes what data um, will be in the model when this view is rendered. And then the JSON file will also describe um, what JSON should be generated as a result of rendering this JSON file. Um, so as, well, let me introduce uh, a few other pieces of the puzzle here and then, and then th this will all make more sense. So what, uh, what line seven is doing is rendering a template. So TMPL is a dynamic variable that's added to your JSON files that is, um, it's a mechanism to simplify rendering a template. So the template that I want to render is called artist. And when I, what I want to pass, uh, what I want to render, um, when I render the artist template, I want to render that template over and over again, once for all of the artists that are in this collection. And then I've got the Elvis operator here. So if artist list is null, then uh, I'll pass an empty list as an argument instead of null here. But uh, the, the net effect of this code is the artist template will be rendered over and over again, once for every element that's in this artist list, um, which is declared up here at line four. So let's take a look at the artist template. And JSON templates um, are defined in file names that follow a convention that is the same as the file naming convention for GSP templates. And that is templates uh, should be defined in a file whose name begins with an underscore. So the file we're looking at here is called index.json. This is not a template, um, but the artist template is in a file called underscore artist.json. So again, we, we're describing the model that will be available when this, uh, when this view is rendered. This time the model will have not an iterable of artists. It's not a collection of artists. It's a particular artist, right? Um, and here in the JSON block, I'm describing how I want to represent artists in JSON. So I want to, I want there to be an element in the JSON, um, a key in the JSON map called artist name. And then the value associated with that key will be whatever the name of this particular artist is. So that artist name space artist.name is what's uh, causing this to happen right here. All right, and this could be anything, right? I can change this to uh, the artist name. And now if I flip back over here and send another request, give that a moment to reload. There we go. We see the artist name, right? And what you just saw there uh, was, was not video editing trickery. The, you really can change these JSON files um, real time while the application is running in development mode and then see the effects of those changes uh, pretty much immediately in your application, right? So this could be the keys in the map, uh, of course, could be anything. So there are two things, two details included in the JSON for each artist. One is the artist's name and the other is details about their list of albums. And, and again, uh, that's, that key could be anything at all, right? So I called it albums, could be called the albums. Um, the way that I wanna represent albums is defined in the album template. So I'm doing the same sort of thing here that we were doing in the index.json, and that is I wanna render the album template and I wanna pass as an argument artist.albums. Remember that the artist class has a property associated with it called albums that will be a set of album objects. So the result of line nine here is the album template will be rendered over and over again once for each element in artist.albums. So if we go look at the album template, we see this is structured a whole lot like the artist template, except it's used for rendering an album and not an artist. And again, I could have album publisher. I'll just hard code a value here. I just want to demonstrate that uh, we can include as much or as little information here um, as we like. So let's see what that looks like. There we go. Album publisher, sub publisher. So we'll get rid of that. Um, so the way that I want to describe an album is in the JSON map, I want there to be a key called album title and the value associated with that key will be whatever the title of this particular album is. The way that I want to represent an artist is what you see here, right? In the map will be a key called artist name and the value associated with that key will be whatever this artist name is. And in addition to the artist name, I want uh, an entry in the map uh, called the albums and the, the value of that will be the result of, uh, will be whatever comes out of rendering the album template 
over and over again for each each of the albums that are associated with this artist. So again, that's this is uh, this is what that looks like. So we've got this really simple, um, uh, really flexible, really powerful mechanism for describe for customizing the format of the JSON that will be included in the response. Uh, as you see, as you've seen here during this demonstration, I can make changes to the JSON files while the application is running and almost immediately see the effects of those changes in the application. Um, the, the views JSON, JSON stuff is just a, a really powerful, really flexible way for describing the JSON that you would like uh, uh, rendered from your application. All right, there's another feature that I want to demonstrate here. And in order to do that, I need to have a mistake in one of my JSON files. So there on line eight, I'm referring to artist.names. And there is no property called names on the artist class. Uh, so what we're going to see is the compiler is going to complain about that. It's going to tell me, hey, there, there is no such property. Uh, and there we go. The build just failed. We'll look at the details here. We see no such property names for class demo.artist. Uh, I made a mistake, right? So I'll fix that typo in my JSON file and build again. And now the thing will, will compile successfully. So one of the things that uh, is being demonstrated there is that the JSON views are being compiled. Um, so that means they're going to perform. They're being statically compiled. That means they're going to perform uh, uh, better than they would otherwise be. And the fact that they're being statically compiled uh, allows the compiler to report things like uh, referring to properties that don't exist, right? So when I had artist.names, we got a compile error and artist.name is valid, so the build was successful now. In order to get that behavior, I had to add another couple of things to my build file. These are not there by default um, when you're creating an application using the web profile. Um, so I just added line 26 to my build.gradle and that is pulling in the views JSON uh, plugin that will uh, will include the static um, type checking compiler that's that yielded the, the compiler that we saw just a moment ago. And in order for that to work, in order for Gradle to find that plugin, you'll have to add this to your um, uh, build script dependencies. So don't confuse this block we're looking at now with your application dependencies, which are defined further down. These are dependencies for the build itself. Um, so this will allow Gradle to find the plugin that includes the, um, uh, the compiler support that I was uh, just demonstrating. All right, I'm looking at a different application now. And uh, the application we've been looking at so far was created with Grails 3.1.1 using the web profile. This application, the one we're looking at now, was uh, also created with Grails 3.1.1, but this time I've created the application using the REST API profile, and that's going to allow me to demonstrate an, another feature related to the JSON views stuff. Um, so I've got a simple domain class called, uh, called person, and, and it's defined the way that you see there. Um, and I've just ran uh, Grails generate all demo dot person was the command I just executed. What I want to point out is notice that the default uh, the scaffolding that's being generated is uh, includes JSON views, not um, uh, uh, GSPs, which what is what the generate all command typically generates. So these generator files look familiar, right? That looks a whole lot like the files we were just looking at. And uh, again, this application was created using the REST API profile and the dependencies are rigged up by default when you're building a, a REST API application. So I did not have to add this, that was already there. Uh, the same with this business here, right? We're applying the views.json plugin, that was there by default. And there is a dependency on the uh, views.json library here. All that is in the application by default when you create an application using the REST API profile um, because that's a sensible default, right? If you're building a REST API application, there's a pretty good chance that you're going to want to take advantage of uh, the JSON views technology stuff that I've been, been describing. The view technology that I've demonstrated here is really powerful and really flexible and will be a big help to a lot of applications where this technology will, will make a lot of sense. 
Uh, there's a lot more to it than I've demonstrated here. I've really only introduced the basics, but even with just that, developers will be able to take advantage of some really great capabilities. Uh, for detailed documentation, visit the Grails Views project under the Grails organization at GitHub, where you will find a link to the official documentation, which goes into a lot more detail than I have during this introduction. Uh, I hope that you found that useful, and I think this technology is going to be a great uh, developer productivity booster for a lot of applications.